All right. Uh, oh, yeah. Now we do this. Backlog. 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 Hey guys, speak of old games, it's the backlog. It's the show where we talk about our old games. That's right. Every game we've ever bought over the course of almost 40 years, 4 0, uh, we put into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick one of those games at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. 40 years? Yeah, because I'm three years away from 40. I'm rounding up. Oh, Christ. Uh, 960 is, is 963. Three, okay. Yeah. I gotta add switch games to this. 646 is the number. 646. And that is, ooh, Metal Gear Solid 5. The Phantom Pain. Wow. Do we just... We've been, we've been, we just did Metal Gear Solid 4. Right. Do we just lump in Ground Zeroes as well? I mean, we might as well, because like... I'm gonna say no. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna say that's a different game. Okay. Because I'll, I have a lot to say about that on its own. Yes. I, all right. I'll f fair enough. I'll allow it. What system did we play this for? PS4, right? Well, you got it on P. This is at a time we were both still living at home, and okay. you had your PS4, and then I bought myself an Xbox, so we had it on both. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but I, it's the same game on both. This yeah. is recent enough where I streamed a lot of this game. Yes. I loved this game. So it got a lot of criticism because uh, they. Hideo Kojima is the guy who made all of the Metal Gear games. Yeah. He, was the, he was the showrunner on everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and he got fired right before the game came out. Yes. Like just a few months before it launched. He, he had a very difficult development cycle with this and it really strained his relationship with Capcom, who at the time was going through their own like weird identity crisis. They didn't want to make video games anymore, seemingly. And like, they had reached their breaking point with the one guy who definitely still wanted to make video games. Not only wanted to make video games, wanted to make the most expensive video games possible. Did we say Capcom? We meant Konami. Konami. Yes. Sorry. And forgive us. Yes. They haven't done anything in a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my theory as to why he left or got fired, I, oh, I think it's obvious he got kicked he, out. He, he got, got forced out, out yeah. in some way. Uh, my theory is that this game was very expensive and it became more and more over budget and more yeah. and more expensive because it is a grand game. It is a massive game. There's definitely a lot of time and money spent in this game. There's yeah. a lot of big budget uh, uh, talent in it. Yes. Uh, they replaced uh, David Hayter uh, as Snake with uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Yes. Who barely says any words. Yeah. I hate that when they put an A-list actor in here. At the time, he was A-list. <laughs> well, no, he's like, Kiefer Sutherland's still like a big name. People yeah. know who he is. So at the time, I mean, when they put a big talent there, they don't have, they don't want to spend too much money on them. Right. So they book them hourly, and he barely has any lines yeah. in this game, even though he's the main character, which is unfortunate because Snake talks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and that's part of what makes Metal Gear so good. Um, but anyway, I think that they just spent so much money on the game and he kept asking for more and more money that they were just like, we can't justify this game as a business anymore. Yeah. Like we've spent, so we, we sell Konami sells bottled water. They have gyms around yeah. Japan. They do They're other a things real estate other than company. video games. Like we can't set, we can't spend hundreds of millions of dollars on your little yeah. fun project. So they ended up firing, which was a terrible move because this game could have been so much bigger than it was. Yeah. Even though it was already a huge success when it launched. Yeah. Um. So the game is clearly in an unfinished state. The first, I don't know, 15 hours or so are amazing. And then you get towards a part where you feel like there's just nothing. It feels like there's right. just a hard cutoff. It's crazy because I would imagine games aren't developed in a linear way like that. No, you know, yeah, and it feels like it is though, because it it literally feels like the game just is doesn't have an ending. It just yeah. is unfinished. You, ha I had to kind of look it up on YouTube. People, <laughs> people data mined the game and found yeah. like a kind of a storyboard of an ending. Yeah, they people found like deleted scenes that are technically still on the disc. Like yeah. the data is in the game, but like there's no mission for it. There's no context for it. It was just abandoned because Yokojima was never able to implement what that story level would have been. 
yeah, it sucks because yeah. it was incredible. I, I, I loved a lot of this game. It, it just, it, it, it had no resolve. Like, like, I, yeah, I, there was no closure in it. And this was supposed to be such a great, they set it up to be such a grand thing. Like, yeah. like it's, it's decades of metal gear. And they made it clear, like this. even before we knew anything that was happening with Kojima and Konami, like they made it clear. This is it. This is the yeah. last game. This, they're not. We're not going to do any more Metal Gears after this. This is this is the period at the end of the sentence. Yeah. So you're expecting it to go out in this big epic fashion, and for it to essentially release unfinished, like it's just so heartbreaking and disappointing. It still has some of my favorite moments in uh, video games, like in sing right. in single player games. Like there's a couple of games that I would. Uh, give examples of or mo storytelling moments that could only happen in a video game. Right. This has one of them. I don't think I want to spoil it for people because right. of how, how cool it is. Uh, I'm not even a hundred percent sure. I'm pretty sure it's a mandatory mission. Did you beat the game? No, I okay. quit the game. Cause I don't like this game. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm sorry. Like I tried, like I really, really tried. Like I, I played four. I was a little burnt out by four. I played. Did you like four? We I talked did. about four. We did. I did like it, but I'm like, all right, it's the Metal Gear. It's a little long in the tooth, whatever. Um, but then I played. There's a the thing. I played Ground Zeroes. I fucking loved Ground, Ground Zeroes. Ground Zeroes is awesome. I was like, oh my god, I'm so pumped for five. I'm yeah. so pumped for the Phantom Pain. And then the Phantom Pain comes out. It's not even the fact that the game is unfinished. That is the problem. I don't like the way like the mission structure of this this isn't metal gear to me this is a different game the fact that you're so focused on like resource management and maintaining the mother base and like yeah you know making sure your teammates are happy and like the fact like the the fact that you have to go into every mission like with a very specific loadout otherwise you're gonna have a very difficult time you know, depending on what mission you select and like what you want to do. Like if you pick the wrong sidekick, if you pick quiet instead of the dog, you're going to have a bad time. And if you pick the dog instead of quiet, you're going to have a bad time on a different mission. So I, oh, I'm not, I don't love RPG elements like that. Where yeah. You have to like tool around. Sometimes I do like to tweak loadouts and stuff. Right. Uh, this game, I was willing to put up with it because of how much I liked the gameplay loop. Uh, but that being said, for the most part, I played this game as a pacifist. Right. So every loadout of mine was just the uh, tranquilizer sniper and the tranquilizer yeah. uh, handgun, and that's it. And I was leading, I was building my loadout and unlocking stuff to get all of the uh, uh, less lethal weapons right. and stuff, and building out uh, uh, quiet to have a less lethal sniper weapon. Yeah. So. You also get a companion in this game. You can switch between uh, different uh, side characters. Yeah. One of them is the dog. Yes. Who's great. Yeah. The other one is Quiet, who's yes. a sniper, who's also great. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is, I think the person who's playing this uh, uh, gameplay right now that you're seeing on screen, their companion is this big robot that you uh, drive yeah. around in. Uh, there's other ones too. But I mostly just use the dog and Quiet. Yeah. Um. And I also didn't like the resource management of Mother Base too much, but I I ended I I got used to it and kind of uh, enjoyed taking a break between missions and tweaking around with it. Yeah. What I liked the most that a lot of other people didn't like was uh, the sort of open, uh, I don't know, like the sandbox structure. Yeah, of it. that I thought was cool. Yeah. Like I thought that was like a unique uh, expansion of what the Metal Gear idea was because the Metal Gear games they weren't they were never open world, but like the place the places you were were open enough where you could you know choose your own path and like decide how you're going to finish this level yeah i just think that like you know every the thing is too like every metal gear game gets more and more complex with the moment to moment gameplay and this just like hit a point of like high complexity for me that i just think was at odds with like what a metal gear game should be so do you think the actual mechanics for doing action in the game was too complex or do you think that the other stuff around it like the unlocking stuff and and the going back to mother base and like bringing resources back to mother base more so that stuff okay. than every, that stuff yeah. is a little annoying yeah. that stuff is more annoying to me in peace walker there's a yeah. lot of stuff like that in peace walker yeah. and and uh if you like don't play the game for a while and you come back to it it's it gets a little confusing yeah um 
Now, I did really like the mechanics in this game. Right. Uh, uh, the, uh, just running around and shooting and like and the stealthing around is awesome. And that's part of why Ground Zeroes was so good, too, because yeah. that's such a confined way yeah. of, of it. Uh, somebody in the chat, uh, Rock says, these mechanics is Helldivers 2. So I like Helldivers 2 also. Yeah. And I couldn't explain to somebody why I like Helldivers 2. I was just like, I just, I just think it's a fun game to just run yeah. around and shoot things. And then I saw on TikTok a side-by-side -side comparison of the movement and shooting mechanics in Helldivers 2 versus this. Right. And it is one-to-one. -one. <laughs> They're exactly the same. Okay. And that's why Helldivers 2 is good. Yeah. Is because they ripped it from this game. So, uh, again, there are moments in this game that I think are uh, some of the best cinematic moments in video games that could only be told in video games and yeah. are only impactful because of video games. I think there's a lot here that does a lot for the Metal Gear story, that does a lot for the Metal Gear franchise i think it has a really good twist at the end too that i think is really good yeah it's just in the fucking third act it just crumbles and just gives you nothing it just leaves you yeah it, it could have it, it builds you up to just then give you kind of nothing yeah i uh, think i didn't realize that the game was over like when it was over yeah uh so that part is unfortunate but i do think that this is still one of the best games I've ever played just because of how well it does everything else. I think it's overrated. I think <laughs> when it came, no, I do because I, when it came out, this is one of those games where like it comes out and every fucking review site under the sun, you know, just gives it a 10 out of 10, no questions asked. Like they don't even like get into any of the problems of it. They just say like, Oh, it's a Kojima metal gear game. It has to have a 10. It's the only score we're allowed to give it. Like they don't go. This is, this is why, Yo, know, people have such a problem with review scores is because they put the tens on pedestals where only like five games are allowed to get tens these days. Grand Theft Auto, Metal Kojima Metal Gear Solid, uh, Mario, Zelda, and uh, fucking Tetris or whatever. And like, that's it. Nothing else is allowed to cross that. And like, when those games get tens, they don't go into detail as to like why, just that they're great. They don't break down like any of the actual problems with the gameplay or the story or like the mechanics of it. They just gloss over it because these games are expected to get tens because they are in the category, they are the franchises that we have deemed worthy of receiving tens. So this does not deserve a 10. No. Because it is unfinished. Yes. They're, they're, they literally just doesn't yes. have an... There's there's clearly missions it's that are missing. It's unfinished, and I feel like it is, you know, it is well within people's rights to criticize uh, mechanics that are yeah. flawed in a lot of sense. But, because, like, yes, the mother base shit does drag everything down considerably. Well, I'm willing to give it a pass for that because of how well it does everything else. And I think that, as, especially at the time... No other game was doing the everything else as good as this. Right. This had so much more going for it in terms of actual game mechanics and actual gameplay that, like, having to fucking go through menus in Mother Base was, like, fine, you know? Uh, so I understand it in that way, but it's egregious to give this a 10 out of 10 just because Konami fucked the game up right. so bad. Konami stood in the way and cock-blocked this game from being as good as it could mm -hmm. have been. Yeah. Um, last thing I'll say, it did have a multiplayer element. You could yes. just go into other people's bases and fuck everything yes. up. Uh, and I think you can opt out of it. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. Did you do that? Yeah. I, I can see you I not immediately opt that. out of it. Then it also had like a dedicated multiplayer mode where like you could like work with teammates to like disarm yeah. nukes and stuff. So the big deal with the multiplayer mode was that uh in the game, the game gives you a choice whether or not you wanna make a nuke on Mother Base. On yeah. your, uh, whether or not you want your army to have a nuke or not. Uh and there was sort of a goal within the game to have everybody decide not to have a nuke yeah and if you had a nuke i think other players their objective was to take it away from you or something yeah um and the game hit a point on playstation 3 where yeah. there were they were the game was completely nuke free not a single person uh had a nuke on their mother base yeah so they th that was like p one of the goals of the game was to make sure uh no army had a nuke which is pretty cool uh and like Metal Gear, 
there's sort of like an incentive to uh, not kill people if you want to go that route. Like yeah. they make it pretty e uh, easy for you to, well, not easy, but they, you can play the game without killing anybody. Mm -hmm. I killed two people the whole playthrough. Really? Uh, because I accidentally ran a guy over <laughs> twice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I love this game. It's really unfortunate that we never got to see like a proper ending with it. It's unfortunate that could Kojima got launched. Uh, Will thinks it's overrated. I do. I don't think it's overrated per se. If they're giving it 10s, I don't think it deserves a 10. Yeah. So in that way, I, I guess it's overrated. I should also point out that like, according to how long to beat, the main, the, the main story of this game is 45 hours long. It is a long it's game. It's a long game. It's a, a long game for you to get cucked at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... The other Metal Gear games like average about like you know fifteen hours and stuff. That seems more manageable to me. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to go back to this game because of its length. You know, I just I don't have so that type good. of time anymore. So Wood was interested in Metal Gear, mm -hmm. and everybody always asks us, of, us if they're interested in Metal Gear, where should they start? Yeah, uh, I think the best place to start if you're willing to go back that far is Twin Snakes. Yeah. Uh. But for Wood, he doesn't really like retro games. Right. So I said, just play Ground Zeroes. It's an hour long, two yeah. hours long. Uh, and it's got the same mechanics as this. Yeah. So you can see how good it gets, yeah. you know, in a quick little two hour demo. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that. I think that that's the easiest yeah. entry point for somebody. It's not the best way to experience the Metal Gear story, but it's, it's a such a low barrier to entry. Yeah. Only two hours. I would recommend that over this game because this game is so long and a little disappointing towards the end. Yeah. So, like Ground Zero is mm -hmm. what I'd say. And if you like yeah. that, then you get another 45 hours of it with this <laughs> game. So there you go. Mm -hmm. A lot of Metal Gear. Yeah. You get to talk Metal, Gear, Metal Gear as a whole is good. You, never, you can never go wrong with Metal Gear. Yes, you can. You, so, you could. Survive. You could. Yeah. <laughs> True. Snake's Revenge. Uh... Thanks for watching the backlog. Yes. Come to a podcast sometime. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.